This video gives a description of some basic stock market data including major US stock market indices, PE ratio and its significance, and other important uh, stock market statistics that I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to begin by taking you to Yahoo Finance which I cropped out here and placed it on my PowerPoint and right here you're gonna see the four major indices beginning with uh, S&P 500 which is short for Standard & Poor's 500. S&P 500 is the market value index of approximately 500 large capitalization stocks in the country created in 1923 actually and when we use the term market capitalization it means the same thing as market value the market value of a stock is the stock price multiplied by the number of shares of that stock that are outstanding. So now the uh, next one right here is Dow Jones Industrial Average or Dow 30 for short uh, which is actually a price weighted index of 30 leading industrial stocks created back in 1896. So unlike S&P 500 and the rest of these indices the Dow is actually just simply price weighted. A type of averaging of the uh, prices of the underlying 30 stocks right here. So not nearly as informative as S&P 500 and these are the ones from a valuation standpoint. So just be aware of that. And then the next one right here is NASDAQ Composite Index. So the NASDAQ Index is a, is a market value index of all the uh, stocks that trade over the counter uh, in the uh, NASDAQ exchange. Actually NASDAQ is an acronym meaning the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation which is uh, basically the trading system that is utilized right here. Now how about Russell 2000? Now before I tell you about that there is a larger index called Russell 3000 which is a market value index of the 3000 largest US uh, stocks created back in 1984. So now of that Russell 3000 we have Russell 2000 which is actually the lower uh, the lower two-thirds of Russell uh, 3000 meaning that this is an index of the 2000 smallest firms in the uh, in that index. So when you look at an index there are of course three pieces of information to get out of here the first is going to be the level the current level in the case of S&P 500 uh, on this date right here it is 2447.33 and the second is the change from the previous day's uh, close which as you can see here it went up by almost 210 points and the third is the percentage change which you can see here is a remarkable increase of nine points almost four percent usually when an index changes by two percent or greater up or down that's uh, generally considered to be a, a significant move all right now so going here let's consider it's a specific stock such as Nike right here now some of the terms in here are defined right here so now let's pour over this real quick so first of all we can see the closing stock price for Nike on this particular trading date it's seventy two dollars and thirty three cents and uh, going down here the day before it closed at 62.8 so as you can see from this 62.8 of the day before the trading day before to 72.33 uh, on this date is an increase of about nine and a half points or 15.18 percent so uh, on this trading day the opening price was 65.7 um, and uh, going down here you can see that the day's range was 64 all the way to 72.66 so obviously you can see that the stock closed uh, right around uh, the high for the day and right here is a 52 week range so over the past uh, 52, 52 week period one year it traded all the way from 60 to 105.62 so you can see it's actually well below its uh, high of the uh, over the past uh, uh, over the preceding 52 uh, weeks and then the volume of trade tells you the number of shares that exchange hands and then right over here you can see the current market cap for Nike you already know that what market cap stands again it's the total market value of the stock which is 
uh, price stock price per share multiplied by the number of shares outstanding this summary statistics doesn't tell us the number of shares outstanding we can definitely figure that out because we already know that market value is price times number of shares and we ha we have price here and so to f estimate the number of shares all we got to do is divide this market cap by 72.33 now the next stop here is beta. Beta is a measure of the systematic risk of a firm, which is the risk that a stock held in a diversified portfolio is exposed to. And typically if a stock's beta is 1, it just tells us that the stock is just as volatile as the market. If it's 2, it tells us the stock is twice as volatile as the market. And so this stock is only 0.86, approximately 0.9. So we know that Nike is not nearly as erratic in behavior, if I may use that term as the overall US stock market. PE ratio right here is an important fundamental and right now it's just uh, a little above 25 points. So now the PE ratio which is shown right here clearly is actually the ratio of the stock price in this case 72.33 and earnings per share which is given to be 2.86. So what this is telling us in effect is that for every um, is uh, the PE ratio of 25 is telling us that uh, uh, for every dollar of earnings that uh, investors are paying about $25. So it's an interesting relationship of how much one is willing to pay per dollar of earnings. And when you look at this um, with a, uh, an additional pair of eyes, you can also see that it could be viewed as an indication of a stock's payback period. For example, with a P.E. ratio of 25, it could be telling us that assuming that the firm were to distribute all of its earnings, all, right, all of its net profit, that is, that's what E stands for, to its uh, investors uh, in the form of dividends, and uh, if earnings per share stays unchanged throughout the period, then it would take about 25 years for the investor to recover uh, to recover the uh, initial investment, because you are looking at how much the investor has paid, given how much the firm is able to pay the investor right now. So now, right here, well, we see uh, the dividend and the yield. So based on the last activity. Uh, dividend per share 98 cents per share and the div dividend yield is actually dividend divided by stock price so if you were to divide 0.98 by this 72.33 you're gonna get approximately 1.35 percent so now in closing let's take a second look at the PE ratio with this we can craft a relationship that can help us estimate the firm's uh, stock price if we believe the firm uh, is comparable to the average firm in its industry. And we call the relationship that you see right here the PE multiple stock valuation approach, whereby we're multiplying the average industry PE ratio by the earnings per share of the underlying firm. So as I show right here, say industry PE ratio is 24 and the underlying firm's uh, earnings per share is $1.50. All we got to do to get a sense as to how much we believe the stock should be priced at is to execute this relationship because algebraically if you divide if you multiply P over E by E you're gonna get P. What's P? The price of stock. And so by multiplying the industry PE ratio in relation to the earnings per share uh, of the firm multiplying these two we're gonna get thirty six dollars which tells us that um, this stock should be valued at about thirty six dollars if we believe that this stock is comparable to the average firm in its industry alright and that is the relationship that's summarized in this box and that's a wrap